G'day, how you going? My name's Dan, and welcome to the Green and Gold Life. All right, so earlier this week, I got news that uh, me Tiff Tuff is on the way. Yo, yo, D. We're finally gonna take delivery of that uh, Friday next week, so I've got uh, six days to get, the, to get the deck ready for the Tiff Tuff. So today's job is to get rid of all of this old kai here that's died off. So um, I reckon we've got roughly about 10 square meters here that we need to dig out by hand. So setting to a ball and chain this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Real slave labour sort of stuff, so I'm um, gonna get that out. So there's a French drain underneath there, which is why I didn't get it with the turf cutter a couple of months ago. So uh, unfortunately, that's all hand work. Then the next job will be to rotary hoe and loosen up all of this loam that's just here at the moment. So uh, the idea would be to add a little bit extra so that when we come and lay down our turf, it's nice and flat and uh, we can get our cylinder out here. All right. What have we got here? It's time to blood these kicks. So the father-in-law's got the trailer, so I'm gonna have to uh, source another one. Alrighty, as you can see, we're all tidied up. It only took me about two hours, eh, which was rad, because uh, I thought I was gonna be here all day. So it came out a lot easier than I thought. My thoughts are, it's been dead for like two, three months, and the root mass has just rotted away, and it's been able to be extracted really easy. So that's my theory, I'm going with it. <laughs> so I just got back, I went, and go and, I went to go and dump all of that gunk, and uh, picked up another trailer load of loam. So what I'm gonna do now is, um, Square up a few of my sprinklers because a few of them are a little bit cattywampus, and then uh, and then drop my sewer IP and then start getting out some loam. All right, so I've just gone and straightened up my sprinklers. It only took me about an hour to go around, dig them all out, and check them out. So I'm just going to run my Hunter system here off my phone. So this is a Hydrawise system from Hunter, uh, mate. It's wicked mad handy. So I don't have to run over to the box. I can just do it here on my phone. So uh, what have I got here? Front lawn, Bing pot run
Mate, how easy is that? I'm just going to go and check them out, make sure nothing's really leaking. Um, so now, I've, yeah, I've got issues up here in this corner here. Yeah, so you can see I've got issues in the back right hand corner. Um, I'm just going to have a look there. I don't think supply has been cut because you can see the pop ups actually up. So it might just be the heads blocked or something. I've checked the filter basket, but there doesn't seem to be anything wrong there. So um, I'm just going to go and check them all out and uh, touch back in a bit. Alrighty, so everything's running sweet except for uh, back up here in this corner. So I'm just going to replace that sprinkler head and see, see if that fixes the issue. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, underneath there's no leaks, so I can go through, um, stand these all up straight again, and uh, and back through the hole. All right. Alrighty, you'll have to excuse the mess behind me. I've, uh, I've got to clean up. Here's that 100mm DWV end cap that uh, I took out of the lawn. So uh, I want to try and reuse this cap. It's a little trick I, uh, I learned back in the day to, uh, to get this off. So what you can do is apply some of your pipe cement. So it's highly flammable. Uh, I generally use the blue stuff, but this is pressure gear. Oof. <laughs> yeah, this might be cactus. That is definitely good. Anyway, apply that to the inside here. Set that on fire. Maybe don't do it on a total fire band though. What that's gonna do is just is just help make that, that PVC malleable and uh, and uh, if there is glue actually on the inside, but help melt that glue. But once that fizzles down a bit, we should be able to use our pliers and stuff here and just work that out. Nothing wrong with that. You can go and reuse that. And, uh, Cut that out without damaging it. Just a wicked bad trick, eh? everyone how are we ah, oh, Sunday morning what a beautiful morning it's got to be that 18 20 degrees oh beautiful a little bit overcast but it's all right. You'll be right. so uh went off to Kennards this morning and picked up a rotary hoe because yeah but uh you know it's not too hard now so we had a little bit of rain overnight and had the sprinklers on as well so um, we should should be able to break through it really easy so um, before we go breaking out the machinery, I had to go and mark out my um, mark out my trench here. You should be able to see it just behind me in some orange markings there. Yeah, there we go. So uh, just here is where my French drain is. So uh, I won't be going too close to that line with the rotary hoe because uh, yeah, I don't want to go digging out my French drain, which which would uh, which would be a disaster. Um, and also the irrigation. You know, you might want to go through mark out where your irrigation and all of that sort of stuff is because you don't want to go trashing that with your rotary hoe either. All right, let's tuck in. Man.
That tilling machine from Kennards was not worth the money to go and get. Uh, I had dramas with it the whole time it fought me. I could only run it on half throttle because it wanted to flood itself. Um, it barely dug in 20 mil and uh, I'm livid, absolutely upset. So I'm going to go and take that back. I've got I'm going to transfer, I've done what I can do, I'm going to transfer all of that soil, all the apprentice is going to do it for me, get that all over here, and then do that side, and then get rid of it. Mate, I'll be asking for my money back, I am livid. Anyway, can only do what we can do. Alright, next step for me is to start laying down some loam. So if you've got to put lawn down at your home, um, you can probably follow some of the steps that I'm doing here, uh, except you'll probably be putting in a bit more, like 100, 150 mil worth of loam. I'm only sort of topping up here like 50 mil or so, because there's already existing loam underneath me at the moment. So, um, first step for me will be to go through and uh, establish levels. So with my little hurdy-gurdy here, I've gone around and checked. There's about 40 mil fall from the retaining wall down to my French drain down here. So that's rad, that's gonna keep the water moving from here down to the French drain and out of my life. So uh, I've got this little board here. So you can see I've got a 30 mil side and a 40 mil side. So that is essentially just going to hook onto the, that little curb that I fought around the bottom and I can drag that through and screed off around the edges um, and then we're going to be nice and level. So uh, I picked this trick up from the old man back when I used to lay pavers for him, so <laughs> cheers dad. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to rob that idea, just go around here and um, screed out the edges. Then the next step will be to set up a string line uh, in this sort of north-south plane running this way. That way I can sort of screed this way to set up like a screed strip and then I should just be able to lay the screed down and uh, work down the hill. So that's how, I'm, that's how I plan to attack it. I've got this uh, spinning laser here, so you may or may not need one of those. So uh, for example, you might be able to get away with uh, using a spirit level, but um, you know my spirit level is not big enough to, to sort of go between the screeds. So uh, yeah, I'll be, using, I'll be using the laser level. So. Let's do this, eh? So I'm just going to set up a string line now so that um, I can get it nice and flat throughout here. I thought I'd just show you real quick how I like to set up a string line. So uh, you're going to want a loop on one end, so you can put it over the uh, so you can put it over the, the peg that you've got knocked in the ground. So, so just a little quick loop like that. Then we'll drop you down to the drop you down to the pin. We'll have a look down there. Alrighty. So with our loop, we don't want to just put it directly over the peg like that. It, uh, it can drop and rise and if you kick it, you know, you might alter your level. So what we're actually going to do is put a secondary loop in the line. So we're going to put it on like that. That way when we, we drop it over, we can tighten it off, just like that. But also what we can do is pinch it off like that and we'll go around the pin a few times. That way the line is locked into position. It's not going to go anywhere. So I'm going to go back down the peg at the other end while holding the tension on that and we'll go down and have a look. So uh, I like to leave this proud. So I know my screed's not going to be screeding to that level. It's miles too high. So what, I've, what I'm going to do is uh, leave it high, come back with the laser level once it's set up and then just knock it in uh, to the level that's required. All right, let's go up the other end. All right, so we're up the other end at the other peg. So uh, we can see it's got a nice tension and nothing's touching it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in proud like this and we're going to suck a bit of tension onto it. That way we know, um, that way we know it's not touching anything and, um, and we can get a nice true level. You'll note at this end we want to tie it off but we don't want to tie knots in it or, um, or chop our string line. So what we can do is just go around the pin a few times like this. 
I like to go around three times, but it's, it's really up to you. You could probably even just do it once. And then all you're doing is uh, you're lifting this up over the top, just like that. That then there, chokes it off, and you're all set. Alrighty, so I know my screed's 50 mil, 50 mil deep, and we know this is roughly at the right height here. So uh, we can see there I'm at about 90 mil high, 95 mil high, so all I need to do, knock it in until you get the correct depth. 70 mil. 60 mil. 55 mil. mil. I've just shifted this pin back a bit because there'll be a bit of a grade change. This will come back this way just a fraction because the French drain's sitting right about here. So we want all of that to, to come back this way. So uh, what I've done is I've just put this string, string line in proud and I'm going to transfer that level from over there to over here. So Spot on. Alrighty, so you've got a few options on how you'd like to proceed. You can just try and screed under here like this and work your way back. Um, and just using this to monitor the height of the, the bottom, back of the screed. You run the risk of piling dirt up here and all sorts of stuff and affecting the, the line of your string. So what I like to do is come through this way and just make sure that you're relatively close with this, like this. That way you haven't got as much work when it comes time to uh, when it comes time to start screeding back this way. Alright, now that I've got that relatively sweet, you see I can slip the screed in under there. It's just kissing. It's just sort of kissing at that end. So that tells me that's relatively flat. So now what I'm going to do, swing the screed around this way and start pulling the sand back that way. This generally helps if you've got a uh, someone behind a shovel just pulling it out of your way for you. It makes life a lot easier, but why, when you're by yourself, you just got to make do. All right, let's get to this. Eh? Alrighty, there we go. Sorry about that, had a little bit of a uh, malfunction. <laughs> the camera ran out of battery, so we're all done. Thank goodness, man, I'm cactus, eh? That was a big day. So uh, it took me about five hours to screed all that out and uh, get it nice and flat. So, uh, mate, it is looking nice. <laughs> I'm pretty cheering about that. Um, I'll show you a few shots, a few close-ups, but yeah, it's nice and flat. Basically, what we want to try and avoid is high spots because we can always deal with low spots in top dressing. So now I'm going to get a few low spots when the when the sod takes root and uh, there'll be a little bit of settlement in that in that topsoil. But that's fine. We can work with low spots. It's high spots you really want to avoid. So going through screeding it like that, knocking out all the high spots, getting it nice and flat. Um, you know, it's it's really going to win for you. So um, when it does eventually sink, we can address that. Um, Either, it'll probably be next year now because it's uh, January now. So you'd be kidding yourself to think that once you've got a level like this, that's it. Uh, that's most certainly not the case. You will be back and uh, top dressing a few areas. But that's all right, mate. We could take care of that uh, next season. So um, there's there's about 40 mil worth of fall from the retaining wall back to the house. And then uh, there's a little bit of a, a fall back that way. So, it, uh, so the water always eventually finds the French drain that's there. And uh, all of this is, is still relatively flat, so pretty happy with the outcome, eh? 
So the tiff tough is coming Friday, so I'm wicked mad excited. Hopefully I'm the last delivery of the day because uh, Friday I'll be pretty busy. Uh, I've got a time critical project at work, so I need to be sticking around, but hopefully I can sneak out a bit early, eh? If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You know, we've got plenty going on here uh, at Green and Gold's headquarters, so uh, <laughs> stick around, eh? All right, you guys do me a wicked mad favor and take it easy. I'll chat you on.